Welcome and happy Mother's Day. You know, I, I want to take a few minutes before we get started here with actual worship to just um, thank folks for their patience and their grace as we continue to move through this pandemic uh, with a commitment to keep one another safe. I know that as the weather's been warming up and many of us are getting vaccinated um, and things are opening up a little bit, we really, really want to just leave our masks behind and be able to go do the things that we so enjoy, to come back in the sanctuary, to worship together, to go out to lunch and, and you know, just not have to wear these masks anymore. Um, you know, as far as the worshiping in the sanctuary, I know we keep hearing from folks that other churches are, are open and um, you, know, you really want us to reopen. I, I really wonder if there's ever been a time in history when people were so eager to be in church pews. I, I, I would be surprised if there was. But, um, but the other side of the story is that sadly we know at the beginning of the, of the pandemic some churches were slow to, call, to, to close down. Others refused to slow down and said, we don't need to wear masks. That violates our freedoms. And that a number of those congregations experienced super spreader events where people got very sick, people died. Some of the pastors who taught their people that they shouldn't wear masks, they didn't need them, ended up dying from COVID. And honestly, um, when folks think about, hey, why can't we open up again? Right now, even if we began to meet in limited numbers in the sanctuary to worship, we could do that, but people need to understand, we really, really want you to understand that that would still mean we'd all be wearing masks while we were together in here. It would mean that family groups could sit together, but there'd have to be considerable distance between themselves and everyone else. Um, we would not be able to shake hands or give hugs or go into the Sprague Hall afterwards to enjoy a time of chatting and drinking coffee together. None of those things would be allowed, even if we were getting together in the sanctuary. So please, please, we ask that you just continue to hang in with us for whatever additional time it takes to actually reduce the rate of infections and hospitalizations and deaths down far enough to allow us to, to come back in a joyful, healthy manner, knowing that we're not going to run the risk of making some of the folks that we want to see sick or even cause their deaths. We, we actually have more ability than we tend to think to contribute to the arc of this pandemic. Um, but what that requires is that we allow ourselves to, to set aside for a little bit our wants, our desires, even what we think of as our, as our rights to not have to be told to wear a mask or to keep a distance um, for the simple but powerful purpose of doing what we can to control the spread of this pandemic. We're very clear now, the science is very clear that wearing masks, keeping our distances makes a huge difference. And every time we back away from that, we tend to have another surge. And now that we get into these variants, of course, it becomes all the more important that we all cooperate with this. The folks who want to say, hey, I don't have to do that, uh, you can do that if you want to, are, I think, just plain overlooking the reality that if they get sick, they are also likely to be part of the spread of the variants. They're going to provide a home for this virus to, to evolve in. And that puts everybody at risk, even people that have already been masked and gotten their shots. So 
So please, we just, we're thankful for all the ways that you've tolerated this. We know how hard it's been for all of us. Um, and we hope that even in the midst of our frustrations, we can remember that there is much for us to celebrate together. So let us give thanks and praise. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our awesome God. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our loving Christ. Let all creation break forth into praises of this, our enlivening spirit. Dare to dance with a dreamer, to sing their soul. Dare to dance their story, to sing of stroll. Dare to dance with the freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy. Dare to dance with a dreamer, to sing their soul. Dare to dance their story, to sing of stroll. Dare to dance with the freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. This is our call into worship. Please respond with the words on your screen. The sun breaks through the clouds. We know that God is at work in our lives. And when rain comes again, we will open our umbrellas set out anyway. Please join me in our opening prayer. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, let us be open to learn from the dances of others. Open us to new steps for a new day. Come and dance with us. Engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray, amen. The peace of the risen Christ is with you.
So again, this week we have a time that we think of as a as a children's time for for both children and the child within all of us. We might enjoy together, and just as we have with each week, we're we're letting one of our um, well-known dreamers kind of guide us and illustrate for us how powerful dreaming can be. So this week, we're featuring someone who you, you may very well have seen on, on television. She's a writer, and she wrote a poem for President Biden's inaugural ceremony. Her name is Amanda Gorman, and she has dreams of a new world of justice and love and diversity. In the poem that she read on television, she says the dreams of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president. Of a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of humanity. We know to put our future first. We must first put down our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Did you notice that what Amanda said at the end of her poem? She said that the light, that is the goodness and love and justice, will be there if we are brave enough to both see the light and be the light. So the question is whether we will act on our dreams to make the world a kinder and more loving place. Our colorful umbrellas continue to be an anchor image of a sign of joy and hope, even on rainy days. And today we want to hold on to a phrase inspired by Amanda's poem, Be a Light. So I invite you to join with me in a repeat after me prayer. So I'll say a line, it'll come up on the screen, and I invite you to repeat it back. Let's pray together. We offer thanks for dreamers true, for all they are, and all they do, let us become dreamers too and bring new life to me and to you. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 9 and 11 through 15a, in the New Revised Standard Version, adapted. And Jesus said, As God has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. The second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48, and that's from the New Revised Standard Version. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of God for the people of God. Hi. 
Hi, my name is uh, Brett Turner, and I have been um, going to this church since probably around 2015. I don't exactly remember. I do remember what brought me back, and I will, I will tell you that. Um, I've been singing with the choir since uh, 2017. This was the first year when I was student teaching, and I remember um, taking the bus back from Everett and then getting, um, getting back to choir, um, getting back to choir practice and almost falling asleep some nights because I was so tired. Um, I really enjoy um, just being a part of the music and the services um, and singing as well as playing saxophone. Um, I said what brought me back to, to church, I would explain. So I, I spent several years of my life in which I didn't go to church regularly, but what stayed in my head always was the music and the hymns. And no matter what I did, that music was still in my head. So um, going back and performing and being a part of the choir seemed like a really natural expression of that. Um, my favorite hymn, or at least the hymn that I wanted to talk about today, um, is uh, Be Still My Soul. And something I think is interesting about my relationship with it is um, I've liked it for a long time, but I didn't know until very recently that it was also my grandfather's favorite hymn and the only hymn that he knew how to learn on piano. And it was actually, and this was before I knew his connection with it, it was the first hymn that I learned on the piano. And somehow I just really like our connection through that song, even though I did not know my grandfather because he passed away before I was born, um, I still feel like we, I don't know, are together in some way through it. So even though you probably know it, I'll still sing the first verse. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief and pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. Through every change, God patient will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. You know, uh, Mother's Day is one of these things that I, I always look forward to Mother's Day. I, I uh, feel very uh, blessed to have had the mother I had. Um, and, and, and I, it also seems right to me to, to really engage um, the celebration of mothers in church in that so many of the things that we tend to think of in terms of a mother's love or a mother's care are the same things that that we see Jesus teaching and demonstrating. In fact, I, I've, some of you have heard me say this before. I remember hearing in, in seminary in one of my uh, New Testament classes that, you know, people ask the question, you know, why, why would, why would, God's direct son, um, part of the Godhead, God's embodiment on the earth, come to such a backwater place and, um, and does it by the fact that he, Jesus was a male and that lines up with a lot of the ways that God is talked about um, frequently, does that mean that, you know, there's some special preferences for males. And, and so what I heard in, in the New Testament class was, you know, it might be that God understood that if a woman said and did the things that Jesus did, no one would have been surprised, first of all, but also no one would have paid attention. 
because women were not granted a real public voice. But when it comes to the folks that were living out what Jesus was doing, I suspect that, that many moms were, and many women in general, were not surprised other than to hear a man say it. But the, the reality is that we know not everyone's experience with motherhood, being a mother, or with being the child of a mother, is uh, approach that ideal. Like anything else, we are pretty much cover the wide spectrum from folks who were extraordinarily blessed as mothers and blessed as children of those mothers to, to folks who, who had horrendous times. Um, so as, as with most things, it's not when we celebrate the opportunities of motherhood and the best impacts of motherhood on this day, we really recognize that A, not every woman has chosen to or needs to choose to be a mother. Uh, they can carry out some of the same functions in lots of other ways. Or may just decide to live out their, their goodness, their kindness, their care in, in other venues. Um, and that also everyone is not well prepared for it. It's a challenge of this whole message that Jesus brings um, and that the Bible shares with us in that it's we find in there, in the best case scenario, just that, the best case scenario, the, the presentation of the goals, the aims, the, the ways that are going to allow us to live together most peacefully, most coherently, most cooperatively, most successfully, in all of those ways. Um, but the, I think the emphasis that I find throughout the Bible is that while we can all be nice and we can all be loving, that's something that's inborn for most of us, although even that's not 100% the case, that when we have been loved and when we are loved, we're much better prepared to love others. So those who experience good, healthy, loving, caring, active parenting are certainly much better prepared to be good, loving, caring, active parents. Folks can change their um, experience, but it really makes a difference to have someone in our life who sets an example, who shows us what it looks like, allows us to feel what it feels like to be loved. And so it should be no surprise to us to hear from um, John's Gospel this basic explanation that as God has loved me, so I have loved you. And then the encouragement, abide or rest in or stay in my love. So, so the sense that, that love originates somewhere. And when we've experienced it, we have the opportunity and, and even the call, the encouragement for, for many people, the yearning to be able to share that love with others. And so there, the encouragement is to, to abide in the love that we received and receive from God as well as from one another. So Jesus goes on to say, I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So Jesus said, I'm, I'm telling you these things. I'm doing the things I'm doing because I want to transfer. I want to share my love with you and understand that the more I share, the more I have to share. 
and that will be true for you as well. Um, and that in this way, whatever love you already know, whatever love you already practice and experience might be grown, expanded, deepened, and become even more useful. So we get into this part about my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Unconditionally, thoroughly, actively. That sort of love. And again, the, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. I've mentioned a few weeks ago that doesn't just mean being ready to die for. It means being ready to give up something we might want to do or might think we have the right or privilege to be able to do for the sake of others. Um, to me, this is, this is a, a, a powerful message for our times. Um, and we have this statement that says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And, and again, boy, it's a, I've never been real comfortable with that statement because it makes this sound like it's a transactional thing. That Jesus is saying, I will love you when you do what I command you. But I don't think that's what it's saying. I think it's saying rather that when you're doing what I command you, when you're loving others as I've loved you, you're demonstrating that you are my friends. That's, that's not how you earn my friendship. That's how you reflect my friendship. That's how you grow into not just being friends with me, but into the friendship that I'm teaching, I'm demonstrating, I'm, I'm uh, encouraging. And, and then, again, we hear this distinction, just as we heard with the uh, Good Shepherd. You know, there's the shepherd who really loves the sheep, and then there's the hired hand. Jesus is saying, you know, I, I, I don't call you servants anymore because the servant doesn't know, he, he's not, he's not uh, in the inner circle of really knowing what the master is doing. He's just told what to do and, and just does it. Um, but the friends, the family, the, the folks who truly engage the love, open themselves to a greater access to the big plan and what's going on. Peter, I think that uh, Jesus is constantly trying to open our eyes and our hearts and our minds and our hands and even our pocketbooks and, and wallets to, to understanding how much control we have over the amount of love there is in the world just as we have a lot of control over how long it takes to get this virus under control. So it is in general that we have a great deal of control about how we experience the pandemic while we're in it, how we experience any hardship, illness, sickness, injury, disease, um, financial problems, relationship problems, all those things are things that we can still be loved and loving through. So our second reading that came from Acts, like Chris read, we have this experience. It's not Pentecost. But another time that there's a gathering and the Holy Spirit fell, on, fell onto all those who heard the word. And this is one of those, this is one of those big deal uh, opening moments, because those who came, who were Jewish, who were following, listening to Peter as someone speaking from one Jew to another, didn't anticipate that Gentiles, everybody who was not them would possibly, imaginably, be gifted with the Holy Spirit. But they witnessed that happening. They witnessed folks receiving the Holy Spirit in the same way that they experienced it, and, and at least reasonably, 
for the same purposes and based just with just as with the Jews so with the Gentiles not on privilege but on God's love and desire to include as many people who are willing to join in in that love. So now we hear Peter saying the same thing that we heard the eunuch say last week. Can anyone withhold water from baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And again, for us this may sound like, well, yeah, duh. Or we may go, well, no, wait a minute, I can think of a whole bunch of reasons why that shouldn't happen. But Peter, in his usual way of demonstrating the, what happens when we get gobsmacked in with something we never expected that allows us to see so much more of the world in the way that God sees things and say, well, duh, is there any real reason not to be including these folks in the act of baptism that announces their, their commitment to allow themselves to be fully loved by God and to share that love with others just as they've received it. And so, of course, the end of that little story is that Peter ordered it to be so. Let's baptize these people and in the name of Christ. So again, we have this message that, uh, you know, we, we have a tendency to set boundaries that go beyond what the Bible says, even though we can find them in the Bible. There was that period of time, of course, back when the folks were relatively newly out of Egypt. This huge group of folks who were had been um, bound really only by the fact that they were all slaves. They weren't all even descendants of Jacob. But there was a point out there in the desert that God began to move towards the formation of a demonstration people, people that he were going to be called the, the chosen people. And again, I, <laughs> it's so easy for us to, to think chosen means like we got picked first to play in the game or we got the lead uh, role in the play or we got chosen for the scholarship because we demonstrated so much uh, ability and potential. But that's not, that's not how God does things. If you, if you, when you read your Bible, you'll, you discover that God is consistently choosing the, choosing the folks who we think of as last and least and lost. Um, and so what happened out there is God began to teach, you're the folks I'm going to ask to and intend and shape and form towards being something that everyone else can see and look at, wow, there's something different about this people. They're getting along better. They're showing more love for each other. They're, as a result, they're having success, not necessarily in the sense of getting richer together, but they're a lot happier in life. May we be people who understand that when God chooses we still have a chance to accept God's invitation or ignore it or reject it. But we're chosen not because we're the best and the brightest, but just simply because God wants everyone to find their place in the family and to share that place with others. May we be such a people. Amen and amen. Thank you.
to the seasons of my youth And I recall a box of rags that someone gave us And how my mama put the rags to use There were rags of many colors But every piece was small I didn't have a coat And it was way down in the fall Mama sewed the rags together so I never peace with love She made my coat of many colors That I was so proud of While Mama sewed She told a story From the Bible she had read About a coat of many colors Joseph wore and then she said I hope this coat will bring you Good luck and happiness And I just couldn't wait to wear it with a kiss My coat of many colors that my mama made for me Made only from rags but I wore it so proudly Although we had no money I was rich as I could be In my coat of many colors Mama made for me on my britches, holes in both my shoes, in my coat of many colors. Well, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and making fun of me and my coat of many colors Mama made for me. And oh, I couldn't understand that because I felt I was rich. And then I told them the love my mama sold in every stitch. <laughs> I even told him all that story mama told me while she sold and why my coat of many colors was worth more than all their clothes. They didn't understand it and I tried to make them see. again to a time of joining in prayer. Let's begin with a, let's begin this way. For the beauty of the world and all its diversity, we give you thanks, O God. We give you thanks for the sunshine and for the rain that refills the aquifers and dampens down the landscape, the better to protect against fires. We give you thanks for times of health and well-being, and we also give you thanks for your loving support in 
difficult times and challenging times and for the love and support of others as well. We thank you for all of the ways that we can demonstrate your love to the world and that we can engage in that love as both active recipient and uh, active conduit to let that move through us as well. We thank you, especially this week, for the work of teachers at every level, and especially in this past year when they had to so radically and so quickly change how they did their work and have worked under extraordinarily challenging circumstances to continue to provide not only facts and data and education, but their nurturing relationship that teaching also so um, requires and, and is benefits from. We thank you especially for uh, the, the teachers we know out there in the school districts. We thank you for Eric and for Brett. We thank you for the folks who are and have been teachers here in this congregation and our several retired teachers for all the lives that they have impacted. For all of these things, Lord, our people, let us pray together. We need your healing, O Holy One, for a troubled planet, for our nation, for all who are struggling in body, mind, relationships, and spirit. And so remember those who are suffering or struggling or experiencing challenges. We remember Shirley and Sue, and we remember all the people who are in need of some medical care, whether routine or extraordinary um, at this point, who are facing unusual obstacles to try to receive that care because of the pandemic. We thank you for all the folks who are steadfastly working to provide such care. We thank you for um, guiding us, Lord, and ask for your strong guidance and assistance that we might return to a time or create a new time in which we can truly talk to one another, in which we can share ideas with open hearts and open minds, the better to open the future that we can create and enjoy together. We ask, Lord, for strength in our internal self-reflective battles to, or challenges to, to recognize, and recognize where racism lives in us, where we carry and live out a sense of privilege that interferes with or blocks the rights and privileges of others. And we ask, Lord, that you help us in this great nation where we have the freedom and the responsibility to choose leaders and to share with those leaders what's really important to us, that we recognize and help them to recognize None of us have the right idea all the time. All of us have the right idea some of the time that we might truly develop a cooperative spirit in our lives together. For all of these things, let us pray together. Resurrected, teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter
leads me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Lord, we ask that you be with us now. May the dance of your spirit always call us to engage with you and with the needs around us. Lead us. Guide us. Surround, strengthen, and fill us. Let us pray together. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. You know, as people of one um, congregation, of one um, humanity, let us join together in lifting up the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Just as we heard in the scripture reading today, our joy is complete because the joy of Christ resides within us. And to the extent that we allow the joy of Christ to reside within us. When that's the case, and the more that that's the case, we simply cannot help but break forth with that joy. And we need to remember, of course, that this joy is available to all. Just as they realized in the community, in the story from the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit finds its way even in, perhaps especially, in what feels like unlikely people and unlikely situations. Everything and everyone in creation has the potential to offer new insights. So let us support ministries that move forward toward a new solution for a world through our offering today. Both our financial offering, which can be provided either by mailing to the church, putting in our locked mailbox, or using the donation uh, button on our website, um, and also the other forms of engagement that allow us to offer our, our time and our energy and our spirit. Um, I want to especially remind you today that next Sunday, May 16th, we will be having a drive-in worship. So that'll be at 10.30 on Sunday morning. 
we do really need you to use the uh, sign up procedure that's on our website. If you need help with that, just contact the office because we really need to have an idea of how many cars are going to be here so we can have a plan for, for the parking of those cars. Um, I want to thank all the folks who sent in photos of your moms or, and or grandmothers. We just so appreciate being able to include those in today's worship. And we have another request before our Pentecost worship, which the Pentecost Sunday is May 23rd, but we're inviting you to send us photos of yourselves in some kind of red garment in celebration of the spirit of Pentecost. And for this, you really will only have a little over a week. We'd really like to get those in here no later than Monday the 17th, so we have time to get them organized. Um, and I want to also remind you that on the 23rd in the afternoon, we'll be having the celebration of the um, Flores family and our opportunity to say goodbye to them um, here at the church. It'll be really rather like a drive-in worship. And once again, we really need you to register, to let us know you're going to be here. Um, so we, got, we have a sense of the cars. And uh, honestly, you know, yeah, that's, that's going to be especially helpful for that day to have that information ahead of time. So for all of those things, we just uh, appreciate it. And of course, we still invite you to be part of our uh, Zoom meetings. We, there's still space in the new um, small groups that are meeting by Zoom for now. And you can find out how to participate in those as well as our regular weekly Zoom meetings by contacting the church office between 9.30 and 1 o'clock Monday through Friday. Once again, um, draw to a close this time together in our separate places. Hear these words of benediction and sending. The poet Hafiz said, Every child has known God. Not the God of names, and not the God of don'ts, not the God who does anything weird, but the God who especially loves speaking to us four words and repeating them, saying over and over, Come, dance with me. Come, dance. May the loving God, 
the risen Christ, the dancing spirit, all fill you with all you need for the days ahead. And all God's people said, Amen. Thanks for joining us once, a day, once again. We hope you have a wonderful day. And I really look forward to being able to see some faces, even if it's through windshields, next Saturday. So please get registered and join us for that drive-in worship. Have a great week. Wear your masks. <laughs>